Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel, Cedric here in Antwerp. Thanks for tuning in again to another brewery breakdown. So today we'll be talking about another Trappist brewery. That means that this video will involve a lot of history and monks for a change, but well, I'm guessing you guys are used to it by now. Now I say a lot of history, but unlike most Trappists, Tint Meadow is fairly young. Um, they've only joined the International Trappist Association in March 2017 and started brewing a year later. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Mount St. Bernard is a Roman Catholic monastery of the Cistercian Order. It was founded in Leicestershire and uh, I'm not butchering that, it's not Le Leicestershire, Leicestershire. And to this day, it is the sole and only Trappist monastery in England or even the whole UK. It follows the, the violent suppression of monasteries in France during the French Revolution, uh, again, which caused many monks to flee to other countries and join other communities or even start new ones of their own. Now remember the story of the Americans at Spencer Trappist or the new Americans of Spencer Trappist. Now in 1794 a small group of Trappist monks planned to travel from France to Canada but on their stopover in London they drew the attention of Thomas Weld of Lulworth. And Thomas Weld of Lulworth is described on Wikipedia as a Catholic recusant, so he opposed the Church of England and he was a, a true Catholic and a philanthropist who distinguished himself in relieving the misfortune of French Revolution refugees and who provided them with land on which to establish, uh, which to establish a monastic community on his estate in East Lulworth. The monks saw this as an opportunity to establish a monastery closer to home and of course so they did. They remained in Lulworth until 1817 when a small group returned to France to re-establish the 12th century Mallory Abbey in Brittany as part of the restoration of Bourbon or the Restauration Bourbon. Another group traveled on to the land in Leicestershire where in 1835 they met Ambrose Lyle March Phillips, who, a wealthy Catholic convert who, just like Thomas Weld, was against the Church of England and wanted to reintroduce the vanished monastic life to the country. He purchased 227 acres of land for the, the Cistercian monks to build a new abbey on and he did this actually mainly out of guilt because his family mansion, Garendon Hall, uh, had replaced the former Garendon Abbey. So his family bought the lands, uh, tore down the abbey and put on a new mansion. The patch of land had an ancient enclosure on it called Tint Meadow. Ling -a -ling. This small near derelict uh, four-room cottage became the residence of the first seven monks during the two-year construction period needed to build only a temporary monastery where they would live pending the opening of the permanent monastery. And that only opened in 1844. Apparently Catholicism was still big in England and the Cistercian monks found many benefactors to support their new monastery, even long before they ever considered brewing beer. Uh, for example, John Talbot and his political peers donated a lot of money and architect Augustus Welby Pugin offered his services completely free of charge. Coincidence or not, Pugin was uh, of French descent, so actually Pugin, as his father fled France during the French Revolution as well, just like the monks. He too was a Catholic convert and worked on many, many prestigious projects uh, like the interior of Westminster uh, Palace, not the Abbey, the Palace, King Edward's uh, school, a myriad of churches, both Anglican uh, and Catholic, St. Chad's Cathedral, abbeys, colleges, and so on and so forth, all throughout the whole of England, Ireland, and Scotland. Technically, he also worked outside of that. Now, 
He even designed a series of chapels and churches for New South Wales in Australia, even though he never uh, went there. Pugin was also an avid producer of stained glass and had extensive knowledge of Gothic and medieval building styles. So Pugin was clearly um, the right man for the job. But I digress, so let's go back to Mount St. Bernard uh, before we make this a history lesson on architecture. The name Mount St. Bernard was derived from its inauguration day, August 20th, the feast day of St. Bernard. And fittingly, St. Bernard was Bernard of Clairvaux, co-founder of the Knights Templar and a major leader in the reformation of the Benedictine order through his position at the top of the Cistercian order. You could say that he's one of the true founders of the Trappist order. Four years later, in 1848, the monastery was granted the status of abbey by Pope Pius IX and on February 18, a date that I only mention because it's my birthday, the first abbot uh, was consecrated. Now it is said that throughout history Mount St. Bernard brought refuge to many poor and hungry people wanderers, travelers, uh, and so on and so forth. For example, they offered food and a place to stay to many Irish um, refugees during the Big Famine, or better known as the Potato Famine. But it was also a place of tranquility for many artists, musicians, politicians, architects in search of inspiration, uh, athletes, writers, whatever. Its hospitality reached thousands and thousands of people with peaks up to 5,000 people in one single year, or so it has been written. It was even proposed as the last resting place for the remains of King Richard III uh, after their discovery in 2012, as he was Catholic. But the University of Leicester, who conducted research on the bones, chose to release the remains to the Anglican Leicester Cathedral instead. Now, in modern times, the monks cultivated the surrounding land and the abbey ran mainly a large dairy farm. Uh, they also have bees and whatnot. But when milk prices fell in 2013 and farming was no longer profitable without modern techniques, um, the monks kind of lost their primary source of income and went looking for other means to provide in their daily needs. There are written sources that state that the Mount St. Bernard Abbey brewed beer of purity and excellence in the 19th century. And even though the historical recipe and almost all accounts of brewing were lost over time, the monks decided they'd pick up this tradition again, um, also because it's quite profitable, and surely did so during the beer boom of the last few decades. So they would earn, uh, yeah, more than enough income to provide for their needs and characters as well. So as I said in the beginning of this video, uh, the Mount St. Bernard monks joined the ITA or uh, International Trappist Association in 2017 and they relocated the refectory, the kitchen and the laundry to start building a brewery in the Abbey. They received a lot of help, know-how and expertise from fellow brewing monks um, in Norcia, which is in Umbria in Italy, uh, saint wadril which is Normandy in France, and also Zundert, which is in the Netherlands, not, not too far from here actually. And also the other, uh, at the time, 11 Trappist breweries uh, came over and helped, uh, as well as local commercial brewers. So, yeah, a lot of know-how was found. Now, after a whole lot of test brewing by Father Michael, the head brewer, and his team, the Tint Meadow Beer was born in July 2018. And two months later, they received the official ATP or Authentic Trappist Product Certification to become the 12th Trappist beer in the world and the only English or British one. Now, of course, we are going to taste and talk about the beer too, but not today. I already I had my Popples Brigery New England IPA, the drizzle. Uh, so we will be talking about this, well, when you see this tomorrow. All right, 
See you tomorrow with a lovely English Trappist. Cheers, you guys. And as usual, comment, like, subscribe. The whole shebang. Cheers.